Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Edge Networking Canada. We're going to start with our land acknowledgement, as we always do. We acknowledge, honour and respect that much of the land that we are gathered on is part of traditional unceded territories of many different Indigenous peoples of Canada. Welcome to another episode. Today, we have a special guest who is leading a company which rescues, quote, ugly but perfectly good produce from the landfill processes it to create amazing upcycled nutrition. He is a former professional hockey player playing in the NHL with the Colorado Avalanche, San Jose Sharks, and the Calgary Flames. He is a Rice University guest lecturer on food waste, an active angel investor, and real estate developer for the past 10 years. Veg Networking Canada is pleased to introduce co-founder of Outcast Foods. Welcome, TJ Galliardi. Thanks for having me, guys. I like the intro. Did I hit Galliardi right? Yeah, no, perfect. <laughs> awesome. So why don't we jump right in? Why don't you tell us more about your own personal vegan plant-based origin story? Yeah, so as you alluded to, I played hockey for a number of years. And, um, you know, I kind of stuck with the traditional hockey player diet. Uh, growing up and kind of in my early years in the NHL but uh, my wife who was my girlfriend back then actually was kind of one of the original vegans she was doing it before anyone really was talking about it and there were no restaurants out there and uh, I don't think the options were nearly as vast as they are now so um, she kind of started talking to me about it obviously just just because it was a big part of her life and um you know, I was kind of set in my ways for a number of years, just used to the, the habit of eating the way I was. And, you know, I thought in my head, okay, it's what got me here to the NHL. So I got to just keep going with it. But uh, she slowly just kind of, I saw how good she felt all the time. And <clears throat> eventually I just started taking a few things out of my diet and immediately seeing results, just better sleep, uh, better recovery, overall less indigestion, anything like that. And, um, Eventually, I just one day I said, all right, enough's enough. Uh, we were actually in Prague on a vacation and I had a chicken schnitzel that was kind of nasty and said, this is it. And I haven't touched a piece of meat or anything like that since then, thankfully. And um, yeah, now our, we have two young kids. They're vegan. And uh, a lot of people around me have, have kind of made the switch as well, including my dad, who was a longtime meat eater and always had a piece of meat on his plate. So it's cool to see the, the transitions. That's really cool that the, the sort of origin stemmed from family and then just grew into more family uh, taking that on. We don't normally have professional athletes here, so I have to ask the question, and maybe you're not still connected with players. I don't know. Maybe you are, but is there any, do you know if this is becoming more of a common thread within professional sports? Going, oh, Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, when I was playing uh, near the end of my career is when I when I switched to plant based and um, no one was doing it other than other than me that I knew of on my team. And then, um, you know, I had heard about a few guys on other teams that were kind of dabbling into it and maybe one or two guys that were full on. Um, but nowadays, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a team that doesn't have at least one guy that's vegan. Um, I think most teams probably have at least three would be my guess um, just from, you know, conversations I've had with former teammates, but um, it's growing fast. And I still think there's a, there's a big bit of a stigma around it where some guys don't want to talk about it because they have a fear of a backlash from people. If they have a bad game saying, Oh, well, you know, you're not eating meat or something stupid like that. But for the most part, it's, it's grown significantly. And there's a lot of outspoken athletes that are vegan now, which is really great to see. Really great to see. And you're right. They are becoming increasingly outspoken across sports, right? Like the Tennessee Titans, we know about them and their team, the um, uh, Ryan something uh, professional pitcher for the uh, Tampa Bay Devil Rays um, as well, more outspoken. So that's really, really cool. Thank you so much for sharing. So Veg Network in Canada, all about where vegan plant-based companies connect and collaborate. So tell us more about when entrepreneurship started for, for you and, and what that spark was like. Well, I mean, I think it started when I was really young. I was the kid who uh, would go around the neighborhood and mow everyone's lawn and make some money. Or if it was a snow day in Calgary, 
um, get the shovel out with my older brother and go make a killing uh, and get a good workout in shoveling everyone's walk. So I think I kind of had that spark at a young age, but never really acted on it because of my playing career. I was so busy. And I think I, I was smart enough um, kind of in the middle of my NHL career to the end of it to start to really network and make some really good connections for things to do once I was done playing because you know the fact of the matter is you can only play hockey for so long and the body eventually quits or the mind does which kind of happened for me a little bit of both I was I was just kind of sick of the game and lost the passion and the timing worked out well for me and uh, I had made a great relationship and friendship with a, a doctor out of uh, Nova Scotia and uh, the two of us were ready to jump in and, and start a business together. Outstanding. Incredible. So you're in a really unique industry. I mean, upcycled nutrition, that's not, you know, everywhere, right? But with, with all that being said, what are some trends in your industry? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's not direct, but indirectly, I think when you're, when you're dealing with upcycling it is kind of plant-based is, is pretty synonymous with it. So a lot of the businesses in this place, they, they would have better for you snacks that are all plant-based um, just kind of healthier alternatives. So that that's obviously one thing, but I think in general upcycling as a whole is a trend, right? So no one, if you would have asked someone, you know, three, four years ago, five years ago, what's upcycling, they'd be like, you mean recycling, right? They would have had no idea what it even means. But nowadays, it's, it's becoming very popular. I think the idea of taking something that's being wasted needlessly that still has value and doing something to it to make it high in value um, is very important, obviously. I think um, with, with the rise in climate change and, and greenhouse gases, people are looking for ways to, to mitigate that. And upcycling is a, a real easy way to do it. Is it safe to say that, you know, recycling might be more akin to sustainability, whereas upcycling is more akin to regener regenerative? Yeah, I think absolutely. Um, you know, regenerative is all about finding a way to create a cycle of, of health, right? Where, where recycling, I mean, it's kind of a negative system, right? You're taking, I guess you call it like virgin goods, and then you're reusing them again, which is great. But what we're doing here with upcycling is, is we're reducing waste, which is so important and finding use to make it where you don't have to do something over again, right? So let's, let's take the example of us where, let's say we'll get a truckload of bananas from, uh, from our grocery partner that show up and they're too yellow as opposed to green. They want them to last on the shelves for a long time. Those bananas would typically go to a landfill without us so we get them we take those bananas we turn them into a good product whether it's um you know dehydrated banana pieces or dehydrated slices of bananas or powder um but what we do in this process is we're saving a whole nother batch of bananas from having to be grown again for human consumption if you understand what i mean by that so it's it's almost um kind of a multiple pronged um, approach to save uh, a ton of effort and a ton of resources. Yeah, it's definitely a whole other like component of food waste, food addressing food insecurity, mm. and and so many important, really really important topics. Um, so maybe you can walk us to quickly where Outcast Foods is now. And then the question is, where is Outcast Foods going in the future? Yeah, when we started, it was just about four years ago with a back of the napkin idea of, of saying, how can we create a scalable solution to food waste? Um, and it grew from there to some research studies with the National Research Council in Canada and a couple of universities. And then I went from there to uh, almost like a bench work lab where we were trying to put our process into place. Um, and now here we are, like I said, four years later, and we have two facilities. Uh, we're gonna be processing over a million pounds a month of, of upcycled goods. So it's, uh, it's an exciting time and it really speaks to the growth of, of sustainability and upcycling as a whole. It's, it's just so important in today's day and um, we're riding the wave and just trying to, to be a good steward to the, to the industry as a whole. 
And where are those facilities and what does distribution look like right now? Yeah, so our first facility is in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. We've expanded that uh, five times. We just finished a, another expansion, which uh, uh, almost tripled our capacity out of there. And then the other facility is just outside of Toronto in Burlington. And that should be open uh, kind of the middle of this month, which is, which is exciting for us. Absolutely. And what's, how, are, how are people getting the product in their hands? What is distribution like? Yeah, so we have two ways. One is we have our, our brand and market, the CPG brand, which is uh, supplements. We have five different uh, protein flavors, and then we have some single ingredients. So banana powder, or blueberry powder, sorry, spinach, kale, products like that, beet powder um, that people would use in various ways in cooking in their house or adding it to smoothies, whatever they like to add a little extra nutrients. And then we have a greens powder. And then we also sell our ingredients uh, business to business to other food companies and pet food companies. Very, very cool. Very cool. Um, no right or wrong answers. Maybe it's already happening. Maybe it's in the pipe. Does Outcast Foods support any charities? Yeah, we do a lot of grassroots things in our local community in, in Nova Scotia. We've supported a lot of sports teams, universities. Um, we've supported some vegan companies as well. So uh, a lot of what we do is based around partnerships. So we'll, we'll find value add partnerships where we can either provide some product for other companies or we can do some um, partnerships where we will inbound their products uh, that they're wasting and find a way to upcycle them. So it's just kind of practicing what we preach. Awesome. Um, all right. This is a this is a great question for you because not only are you an entrepreneur, but there's that common thread that a lot of entrepreneurs have, which is that competitive athletic kind of uh, innate background. So maybe looking at it from both lenses, maybe an athlete, maybe an entrepreneur, books, podcasts, or apps that you would recommend that maybe we don't know about. Mm, that you wouldn't know about. Well, I mean, you probably know about this, but how I built this is a great um, podcast, NPR podcast. Um, I'm trying to think of any other podcast that you guys wouldn't know about. It doesn't have, it doesn't have to be one that we don't know about, but maybe one that like, you know, really resonates with you that you find yourself often listening and watching. Yeah. I mean, you know, with kids, it's hard to, it's hard to get away for anything like that, but, um, definitely the, the, how I built this, that's one that I listen to every single one of them because it's just so cool to hear other people's entrepreneurial journeys um that's probably the only one i really listen to books uh i'm a big audio book guy too when i'm when i'm in the car uh, when i have some time away from uh, from the family a bit so um darren my my co-founder he sends me a new book probably every single month uh which is is pretty nice to to stay on top and try to keep up with him and the amount of books that he consumes so um i wouldn't have any specifics off the top of my head but there's it's constantly i'm, I'm bringing in new books Awesome. Awesome. And as an, as an athlete where I'm sure mental health was really, really important, like you mentioned it earlier, like maybe the body gives up or the mind gives up. So do you use your phone for any apps related to like mental health, wellness, stress relief, anything like that? Not really, to be honest. Like, yeah, I, I feel like I've made a big transition in my life in the last probably, I don't know, six, seven years where I just kind of stop caring about what other people think for the most part it's a constant journey right like there's things that come up and you know it's you you realize it's the ego talking and you go okay now I, I i need to address that and for me it's more of a of a constant of a constant like staying on top of it for myself and now that i have kids you're an example right so if anything comes up where where i notice that ego it's something for me to address and, and to deal with and be a good example for them. And I try to stay off my phone as much as I can, to be honest. Um, no screens for our kids either as much as we can. Just I don't want them to be a zombie. And it kind of goes all in hand in hand, right, with a vegan lifestyle. I think it's uh, it's not just physical health, but mental is, an, is a huge part of it for us as well. Absolutely. Well, you were dropping some advice gems there, but we'll get into that in the last question. And we're almost there. Um, any companies that personally inspire you or maybe the leadership team at Outcast Foods, maybe it's a local company, maybe it's a global company, but are there any companies that not necessarily you're trying to like be like, but are there any companies that inspire you guys? 
Yeah, you know what? In this in this space of food waste reduction, there's some companies that have done some amazing things. Like um, uh, Full Harvest is really cool. Uh, Misfits Market's really cool. Sorry, this guy came up to me, my little my little dog, to say hi and join the party. But um, you know, I think the companies that have have managed to make a difference at scale so far in this world, like especially in the food waste world, because it's such a gigantic problem. Those are all ones that, that you know, I, I find to be um, really inspiring and follow their journey as well. So um, I, I would say those are ones that come to, to mind. And then there's other companies that we're partnered with like uh, Riverside Foods, which is Made Good, the brand that makes Made Good. Um, they're an amazing company. They're, they really walk the walk and um, they really care about sustainability. So seeing companies like that in a BC company, which is uh, Happy Planet Foods, they're amazing as well. They make um, Earth's Own, Nut Milks, all their, all their products are, are vegan as far as I know. So um, really cool to watch them and uh, partner with them as well. Awesome, that's a really cool list. Thank you for sharing. Um, all right. So feels like we've been talking for almost like two seconds. It's gone by so fast. <laughs> um, so last question, always prefaced by uh, not the time to be modest by any means. Uh, we're definitely asking for it. Um, so do you have any advice for business owners, entrepreneurs, and, and people who are, are leaders in their community? Yeah, I think, I mean, for the business side, the thing that I've learned the most is that you know, it's not rocket science. Like you can figure everything out. When I transitioned from hockey to business, there were so many things that I didn't know. But nowadays with with Google and with all these, these online presence, like you can learn anything. There's so many times I was in meetings and, you know, someone would drop some sort of a, of a word that I had no idea what it was or, you know, different, different things like that. And I just quickly Google it and you're like, Oh, okay. Now I know for the next time. Right. So I think it's don't sell yourself short on that side. And the other thing with business is obviously you need to add value all the time, right. Whether that's as an employee or whether that's through partnerships with other companies, it's, it's something that we've strived to do with, with outcasts and it's really, it's paid dividends for us. So you can't just go and ask for something. You got to, you got to be giving something as well. Um, on the personal side, the advice, I think it's, uh, you know, it, it takes time to learn things, right? Like when I first got into the NHL and kind of got into that lifestyle, I, you know, was very self-conscious about my image and, you know, different things like that. And then I realized over time, none of it matters really. Like, who cares what you're wearing, what you're driving, all those things. And um, it's just ultimately made me so much happier to just be happy in my own skin. And, um, you know, it's a work in progress, of course, but just just kind of stop looking at other people and comparing. Comparison is the death of happiness. Boom. I, yeah, that's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Um, so with all of that being said, TJ, uh, before we outro you and, and tell folks where they can find uh, you guys online and on Instagram, is there anything else that we missed or anything else that you want to mention? Uh, I mean, I think everyone that's vegan knows this is it's just only getting better, right? Like there's new restaurants every day. Um, Anytime we go to a new city, whether that's traveling or even when I used to play hockey, like you can find a vegan restaurant anywhere now. I, I remember I was in, I was in Siberia, Novosibirsk, Russia, and there were two vegan restaurants like in the middle of nowhere. So it's come a long way now. And, uh, you know, you go to New York and there's probably 200 vegan restaurants there. So um, it, it's, it's growing rapidly. So it's an exciting time to be vegan. And Hopefully everyone that's kind of on that journey can keep advocating with their dollars and, and see um, more companies come along that are making a difference. What an inspirational way to end that uh, voting with your dollar really does matter. Um, all right, folks, while well, you heard it here, TJ Galliardi dropping complete knowledge um, at the same time coming from a place which is great advice, which is a daily practice of stripping away the ego, uh, remarkable, uh, insights for sure. Uh, you can find out more online, www.outcastfoods.com. Just how it sounds, outcastfoods.com. And on Instagram, it's a little bit different. It's at outcast mission.
just how it sounds on Instagram at Outcast Mission. TJ, thank you so much for being a part of Edge Network in Canada. Happy to have you. Thanks, Justin. I appreciate the time. All right, everybody. Take care.